I'm Vishnu Subramaniam. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about building data blocks in FASTA. Data blocks play a key role in creating the pipeline that is required for most of the deep learning projects. And FASTA has done an amazing job. To do that, let's launch an instance that comes with FASTA preloaded. I've already uh, launched, I'm doing, looking at this uh, particular tutorial called data blocks. Where do you find it? You can find it in uh, GitHub Fasta repository. There's a folder called NBS. There are a lot of tutorials in this, which I would strongly recommend if you're getting started with Fasta, particularly when you have done some, spend some time and you want to dig deeper, then there are a good amount of tutorials that you can look at. One thing is data blocks, okay? Uh, You can go, I've pro if you have not watched uh, this tutorial, I would recommend you to take a look at it once you finish watching this video, okay? To start with this, what we will do is we'll start with something uh, from scratch, okay? Uh, let's create a new notebook itself, okay? Understanding data blocks, okay? So what we're going to try to do is, we'll start with the image classification problem we'll try to build the entire data pipeline that is required for that and we'll be able to show a set of images of dogs and cats that's what we are going to do the very first thing we want to do is import all the required packages which is fasta.vision.all let's say import star okay now almost all the packages that is required for this video is imported then what do we need we need to uh, download the data okay for which fastway has a functionality called untar data and for this example let's start with something called pets data set okay which you would have seen it in the first chapter of the book since it's already downloaded i told you that before doing this video i just ran to see if everything is working okay so the data is already downloaded and it is and it is available in this particular location okay so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a way to convert this into inputs and targets, okay? To start, right, let's look at what this particular folder contains, right? What we can do is we can run any Linux commands from Jupyter Lab or notebook, and you can just say path to understand what is that, okay? There is something, uh, annotation and images, I think we are more interested in images. Okay, as you can see, there are a bunch of file names, right? Fastay has this amazing function called get uh, image files, okay? What it's going to do is it's going to take input as a path and it's going to return all the files that are included in that, okay? As you can see, it's very fast. So we can store it in files, okay? Now let's start with a data block. Let's call it D block or anything that you want. Okay, and then choose data block. Let's start with something empty data block. Okay, uh, d block dot let's call a data set. A data block can create either a data set or a data loader. Okay, uh, let's try to create a data set and let's pass the path. Okay, what happens? It throws an error. Why? It searches for something called items. Okay, and since we have passed a path. There's nothing, uh, it's just a path, there's nothing in it. It doesn't know what to do. Okay, so we have to basically set this get items function in the data block. So let's start with that. Let's say uh, get items. Basically, get items, you have to pass a function that knows how to extract elements from this particular path. Here we know that get image files exactly does that. Uh, let's pass the function called get image files. Now let's again create it. Okay, this time it worked. Okay, so our data sets is it ready? Not really. We are still on the way, right? Let's pick our first element of that. As you can see here, what it does is for input, it has shown uh, that the path to the file, right, is the input, and the target is also that. Okay, basically, what it does is the get items right for, for that we have passed this get image files as a function and whatever it returns it, it returns a huge list of all the files that is passed to your x and y okay why there is a function here called uh, get 
get x okay and get y okay let's say get if you don't uh, basically if you don't do anything right if you don't pass anything what happens is this gets passed and the same value gets returned for x so here for input we don't need to do anything so let's just just for uh, understanding let's pass that as it is okay and let's say lambda here uh, let's do something what what we are supposed to do we have to we are supposed to figure out whether this particular image is a cat or a dog okay and if you're like me and do not know much about dogs and cats let's search for this okay i know cms is cat and if you've already looked at the some of the notebooks in fast AI, you will know that the all the images that are cats actually start with a capital letter right knowing that information let's write a small function that does that how do we how do you do it right we need to extract the name right in a path you can say dot name and returns this and let's say uh, take the first element and say is i think is underscore i'm not sure if we're going to get a syntax error let's just try it out okay okay i think something went wrong what is that str has written up is up then i would assume that this underscore is not there let's try it okay let's try it. this underscore is not there so, so basically we are saying if it's a uppercase then it's a cat and this is a y function okay and if you see for x nothing has happened let's see what happens if we just change it to zero okay basically what happened all our inputs became zero you can change this to uh, one and see it's still zero right we don't want that to be what happens when we don't say anything now whatever uh, your get image files has returned that's one element is passed as it is basically when you don't set anything uh, fast a internally uses something called no operation or something of that nature basically it does not do anything that's what we want to know okay uh, now we are one step ahead right so but still what we want is from a data set we wanted to return an image and probably a category uh, zero or ones because our algorithms do not understand cat dog and all these things we have to represent that in numbers to do that uh, fast a has got this new concept called uh, i mean it has got another concept called blocks okay and there are different blocks available okay so for image let's we use image block and for this which is a category we can use a category block okay let's say if it's a multi-category then we use something called multi-category block you can just search for multi-category block okay now let's see what happens okay so make sure that you never miss a comma otherwise you get this crazier okay so now you can see that there is a uh, i'm assuming it's a dog that's a dog okay and let's say what one okay it's a dog right uh so what happens next are we good okay so there are other few more functionalities that can be done okay so if you look at it right this let's create a data or let's say uh, we have train and validation okay we have a train let's say it has got 11824 okay and then it has got a validation okay it's very important that you have a validation data set while training a deep learning model okay and fastway by default assumes that you're going to create a validation data set so if you don't mention anything in the creation of the data block then by default it splits randomly into two different set data sets the validation set is generally 20 percent why does that magic happen there is something called splitter so at any given point of time you want to know more about what what are the arguments that you can pass to this function right just do a shift tab and you'll find all the things that you can okay so here we have a splitter let's uh, call a splitter and what do we pass to it okay uh, there are multiple uh, functions that are already defined in fast a we can just search the documentation to get what are the what are the oh, some of them which are available okay uh this top ones are generally google ads forget about it okay and let's click the first link mostly that should have the right information okay here we can see a split okay inside that we see a random split okay you can see here it takes a c and it takes 
probably a set of list and then it returns train and validation okay uh, that's what we would need and there are other things uh, probably which you can take a look at if it's useful for some other scenarios like train to splitter index splitter grandparent splitter there are many more okay let's not get into that right now so we would like to use a uh, random splitter okay where it is it's here okay let's see how we can use it okay uh, what is this return? It returns a function. Okay, let's see what argument it takes. It takes two arguments, one at valid percentage, how much data you want, and there's a seed. Okay, and if you have not, if you do not know what is happening inside it, it's always a good idea to take a look at it. Okay, so you can see here, this is a function. Okay, that means we can use any function that we want. And what does that function do? It returns another function. Okay, interesting. And then uh, it somehow figures which takes some object, okay? And what does this object do? We take the length of that and we create a list, okay? And we create a cut and give from the given index, some percentage of that goes as your training and some percentage of that goes as validation, okay? Basically, random splitter is returning a function which knows how to take a list, okay? which on which length works and it creates two indexes uh, of for train and validation right let's take a quick look at what exactly happens what well, well, i mean what is going to be the output it's a function so which returns a function okay and we can pass the files okay and let's say train and validation we don't need to do this we're just doing it to understand it let's see what train contains it contains indexes of 11824 and let's say what val contains 2,950 it contains indexes okay so that's what is happening in random splitter so let's tell data blocks to use random splitter and let's keep it as it is okay we can probably set a seed if you want to do multiple testing and you want to compare the results it's a good idea to set a seed okay but since we're just uh, exploring that's not really required okay so now what we have done we know we basically control how the data is being split okay so what do we do next let's see what are the other arguments that we have but before doing that right uh, there is another beautiful thing that i really like about the data blocks is something called summary okay we can call summary and pass path so what it basically does is it uh, prints all the steps that it's doing internally to create a batch and it also does some kind of testing okay so if you see here it says collating items in a batch what is collating items we know the data set gives one element one input and one target okay but when you want a data loader you group all these inputs and group all these targets that's what becomes a touch tensor right of batch size 32 64 16 or whatever batch size we want in this case the batch size i'm assuming it's three okay it says could not collate the zeroth member of your tuple because we got the following shapes okay so what is happening is the images are of different sizes okay one is 240 300 375 500 467 500 225 300 okay and by the way the three is not bad size the channels here what we're trying to do is we're trying to collate four images and the problem it's saying is they're all of different sizes so what do we do to avoid that we uh, pass in another function to something called item transformation okay basically uh, whatever function you pass here is applied on each element of image block okay or category block but mostly it's uh, category image block let's not get into that so what is the transformation that you want to apply okay resize and say resize it to 224 let's now go back and see if it works work perfectly right but there are uh, so i think by now we will be in clear on what is item transform what is splitter what does get why do what does get items to but what is this what is this image block and category block does right let's try to take a quick look at it let's go and search what does image block does but if you want to understand something the easiest way is to put a uh, double question mark either in the start or in the end and then do a shift enter okay so we can see it's a function okay 
and uh, it's calling a function called transform block okay and what it does is it sets a transformation called trike transformation which is class.create and what is class pal image basically it's calling pal image.create and then it sets a function called batch transformation into float tensor okay so now i know that uh, what image block does is it does some, it passes specific arguments to a transformation block but what is this transformation block so this has got some arguments like type transforms where we know that it's image pal image dot create item transforms we're not using anything here batch transforms uh, is into float tensor okay it's a transformation that converts any integer to float okay so we know that uh, basically there are a bunch of transformations that gets applied it's more of like a constructor right and it's not doing anything more than that so what exactly is happening right if you try to understand the best way to try to understand is create an object of it right let's call imb image block okay and let's create an object of image block okay what does IMB contain? Now we know that it contains batch transforms, DL type, item transforms, and type transforms. And we know what is type transforms. What does it return? It returns a list of transformations. And the first transformation is PIL image, create PIL image, okay? So which I means that I can access it by accessing zeroth index. And I know that it takes the input of get X, get X passed to the image block, and get Y goes to the category block. So here, I can literally pass the input of files of zero. Okay, so what does the image block does? It takes the file name as an input and it generates the image as an output. So now we understood what happens in a image block. Let's also try to understand what happens in a category block, right? We are calling the same transform block, but the only difference here is we are, uh, change we have changed the type transforms to categorize what does categorize does it kind of gets the vocabulary that is true or false cat dogs or let's say a bunch of flower types right and it converts that into zeros and ones so it doesn't do much fancier stuff right but it's important stuff to convert your integers so the text to values that the machine understands okay so now our data block is almost done right let's go back to the data block okay uh, let's say we'll create now data loaders we have not created data, data loader till now right and say data loaders and what do we pass we pass something called source which is the uh, file path okay how do we know it's working the best way to test is get a batch of data okay ds dot one batch Fast air again gives you a nice functionality called one batch, okay, which basically gets you uh, a batch of elements. Okay, let's try to print the shape and let's try to print the shape of these two things. Okay, so now we know the batch size is 64, 3 the channel, image height and width is 224, 224, and the number of categories is uh, batch size 64 and 1. Okay. So you want to understand more what are the other options that are available, you can always do a shift tab and get it. Okay. You want to understand more examples of this, I would recommend you to go and ch check this tutorial. It has got examples for, let's say, MNIST, PITS, Pascal, segmentation points, warning box language model, and all other things. But the foundation is something which we just looked at okay in the next video i'll show how you can build a data block pipeline for an image segmentation problem okay uh, i hope you all enjoyed the video thanks for watching it if you like uh, if you like the video hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and if you have any comments please leave it in the comment section thank you Bye bye